Canadian college baseball player, and a catcher for his baseman uh, from a small city called Spruce Grove in Alberta, Canada. I'm an aspiring data scientist, and if you want to check out any of my work, you can uh, check out perfectperformance.home.blog. Um, so my research is surrounding the C-flat problem that we see in modern baseball right now. Um, the first thing that made me interested in is in my sophomore season, a uh, Juco boy, by the way, um, I wore a ball right in the temple when I got my first concussion, which sucked. And um, so I started, and then when I was watching games, I really thought that if I was wearing a C-flat, like, I, I would have been fine. I just would have went to first base instead of the hospital. Um, so what I did is, and then I eventually stumbled on an article by Paul Lucas on ESPN talking about how players like, you know, um, Tro, Cabrera, and Harper had switched preventively. Obviously, Stanton had switched after he wore the ball in the face. And um, I just wanted to see if perhaps these best players were also the best players in part because of their equipment choices. Um, my hypothesis was mainly around the vision aspect of it. I felt that the extra bit of plastic potentially act um, as a blinder, kind of like on a race course, uh, reducing distraction. Vision is arguably the most important skill in hitting. Um, getting a good pitch hit is so, so important to being a great hitter. And um, I feel too that you know if you have that extra bit of helmet, if you have any anxiety or apprehension surrounding you know 96 mile an hour fastball stuff around your dome, you might be a little bit more relaxed. And being you are any of you are familiar with Harvey Dorkman's work, uh, specifically his book, um, and he's hitting. You know that the first chapter, and the most important chapter in the book is see the ball. Um, so for my first data set, what I did is I um, started players that were 500 play appearances in 2018. Um, I, don't know of any data set that had equipment statistics. So what I did is I watched MLB TV reruns for an entire day, starting players in the C-flap group or a traditional helmet group. Um, so first off, in our first draft, we see a slight percentage of OPS on base were pretty similarly, similarly distributed. Um, however, when we look at walk rate and strikeout rate, you know, it's a, uh, players wearing C-flap helmets struck out slightly more. Um, I ran tests on OBP, slugging OPS, weight on base average, weight runs created, walk rate, strike walk rate, and we saw that a two sample T test revealed no statistically significant difference between the two groups. Um, next, I went into some uh, stat cast metrics in baseball as well. Uh, we found that the reaction velocities were really, really close, and however, traditional, traditional home wearers did have slightly higher uh, launch angles. Again, a two sample T test revealed no statistically significant difference between the two groups. Um, since my hypothesis was largely based on vision, I felt that play discipline <coughs> metrics were incredibly relevant to what I was talking about. Um, we saw that Z swing metrics, uh, Z swing, uh, sorry, and Z contact were pretty close between the two groups. I believe there was a little bit more difference between their O swing and their O contact. Particularly in the C flat players chased more pitches outside of the zone, while traditional helmet wearers made more contact outside the zone, each of which could affect your performance negatively. Like where uh, athletes wearing a C-flat helmet has slightly higher percentage of swing strikes. But again, a two-sample T-test revealed that statistics were not, uh, not statistically significantly different. Feeling that my study was, my first asset had some merit, but I wanted to look at more particularly the players before and after they switched. I looked at Giancarlo Stanton, Miguel Cabrera, Mike Trout, three big names, three phenomenal hitters, great athletes. And what I did is I sorted them roughly 500 to 640 play appearances about the season before and after, seeing what they did. I produced contour plots in R and by their swing tendencies. Um, so what we see largely with Stanton is more so in his uh, count metrics. I went 00, 02, 2021, 00, 02, kind of standard 2 as well, 21 being the big swing count baseball. Um, what we noticed is when Stanton made the switch, he actually had less chases, 0-2, and 2-0 had a more succinct approach, really dialing in on that middle pitch where he does damage. Um, next, we look at Miguel Cabrera. Uh, we see that on his lefty right he splits, that he, um, it's kind of tough to pick up on this graph, but he had a swing zone in his bottom right there, which is not big enough well, that eliminated when he made the switch to see about helmet. Um, then we notice that on his, uh, well, his count, swing tendencies by count, he actually somewhat regressed. Um, next, we looked at uh, Trout. Again, it's really light. I apologize for that. Right here, with both Stanton, without both Trout and Cabrera, we saw that they chased that pitch less after making the switch to the C flat column. 
uh, with Trout as well. We saw that his 2-0 count, he was really hunting that pit, that middle, middle pitch of 0.6, represented as a percent of swings. Um, and 0-2 as well, he had less chases in and around the zone. Overall, the data revealed no statistically significant difference between the two groups. We found that players, whether they were wearing a sea flap or a traditional helmet, performed relatively similar. Um, we did see some differences between tendencies. Those numbers weren't uh, proven statistically within the test or whichever. Um, the biggest takeaway from this is what are the levels. Um, I'm a coach. I've worked with youth athletes. You know, people wear balls like they're not always thinking right. <laughs> you know, like I've seen a lot of youth players like, take some pretty weird swings on some curveballs and get in the head before. <laughs> Um, and we've seen the damage that um, concussions have done to both football and hockey as a sport, as well as individual athletes and any brain injuries that we can prevent. I think we have a, a right to do that and keeping baseball a safe sport for anyone that plays regardless of the level of competition is incredibly important and I think is crucial to the development of the game. Uh, thank you to all the great organizers of the event. Uh, this is awesome. It's so cool. I can't believe I'm here. And, uh, thanks to Fangraphs, Baseball and Savant. Um, for the data. Awesome. Thank you.